Good evening, coming to you from around the campfire. It's Epic Tales featuring Epic Tales, a campfire discussion about all things bookish. Joining me today is my buddy Epic Tales. Let's talk about all things bookish. We haven't even planned this. We don't even know how this is going to go. But hey, Epic's here and things could get crazy when Epic's here. Joining my family here on our camping trip this year. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm just very grateful to, you know, meet the family. It's been, I think, two years since the last time I saw them. Probably, yeah, something like that. And uh, yeah, I miss them. And, you know, when Drew <coughs> offered to, you know, host me at this camp uh, setting and everything, I had to say yes, because it's just the time to relax, you know, talk about stories and, you know, meet his family who have been so wonderful to me. And I'm so grateful to be here. To be honest and i'm excited about what this uh, video is going to be yeah, well i'm so glad to have you here buddy uh you know as soon as we planned this camping trip uh you know my first thought i turned to mary and i said man what if i invited epic uh to join us and i'm so glad that you can make it uh because you know beyond this uh you know this isn't the first time we've gotten together we made a bunch of videos when uh, we went to see the tea party together that yeah. was a blast man Yeah. so much fun with that and we did that tag the one the booktube buddy tag yes yeah. we did that as yeah. well the last yeah. time you were here yeah that was a lot of fun um and you know i love how our conversation just went on so long last time that i was able to break that up into a couple of different videos when you joined uh when i came over to vancouver uh to see the tea party uh my favorite band of all time and now uh you're a fan after seeing their live show as well which was pretty awesome yeah, they are pretty awesome. Pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah, you, you bet, man. Uh, so one of the things that we're going to be doing is you're joining us on the Discord for Dune Buddy Read mm -hmm. uh, coming up starting in August. We're reading one book of each of the Dune books for August, September, October, November, and, and December. The primary works Frank Herr. <coughs> now, I, I know you've seen the movies. Uh, you've talked a little bit about, you, you even did that character video of Paul Atreides, which... I'm going to try to remember to link that in the cards because that is such an awesome video, man. Um, have you read through all the books yet or just seen the movies? No, I've only I've read the first and the second book. Oh, but okay. I'm, I'm such a huge fan of it. And, you know, I kept telling myself because the, the first time I read the second book, I was like, I need a little bit of a break because Dune is such a dense story, dense in the best way possible. Like it has talks like uh, the way it, it, it characterizes his characters and it's the plot and the world building and the way things develop including um how the characters develop and the the direction the story goes in defining these characters even more and more in depth is just out of this world it has to be one of the best books written ever as far as i'm concerned and i feel like it kind of ruins science fiction for me because after i read dune like i just yeah. felt this like chasm this void in my chest and i've been unable to fill it with anything else so i'm really really excited for the body read to just you know fly through all those books and you know have someone that is just in love with it as i am to discuss and you know share ideas and everything oh man i i'm pumped about it has been so long since i first read dune I'm going to be doing the buddy read through Audible. I'm going to be doing that immersive reading, and I'm really looking forward to that. Paul Atreides, I think, is one of the greatest characters in sci-fi that I've ever come across. And the thing with Dune is, and I've said this so many times, the best science fiction isn't about the science fiction, and that's not what Dune's about. It's a epic story in such a grand scope from politics to religion to fanaticism to ideology. Philosophy philosophy as getting there man yeah just so much and it uses a science fiction background and setting to tell these very non-sci-fi stories which is what i love about it and that's what i 
that is what makes good storytelling. That's part of what I love about sci-fi, because a lot of sci-fi has been able to do that. Dune's probably one of the sci-fi that's done it the best. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to reread it, especially after seeing the adaptation. Yes, yes. And something like um, like you mentioned that the best sci-fi stories is not, it's, it's about the characters and the development and all of that. And I agree with you because sometimes I'm reading a sci-fi like novel and it's it's more like showing off like uh you know technology and the directions technology can go and all of that which is a lot of fun but in that world to the characters it's not like wow to the characters that are in the book so it's like presenting it to us as wow like look at all look at the direction technology can go it's kind of like a little bit off-putting for me because uh, like if you were living in that world and you were experiencing things from the character's POV, their experience wouldn't be focused on how crazy their world is. The, 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 the experience would be more of a human experience, like trying to, you know, figure out their problems and trying to develop in the right way while dealing with, you know, adversity and all of that kind of stuff. So um yeah like dune is a book that i feel like got it on every single level and yeah i am so excited to do this read along and the, I'm, I'm definitely this one i'm definitely going to enjoy um for the rest of the year no kidding man uh, whether it's science fiction or fantasy when the uh, when the uh, features of that universe overwhelm the story and the story becomes more about the features of the universe. And this isn't something that just happens in science fiction, although I think it's definitely more obvious in science fiction than in, say, fantasy. But even in works like fantasy, the magical elements of the world can overwhelm the story. True. And, and can get to a point where they're not driving the story, but rather the characters are there to show you the magical elements. Yeah. Or like in sci-fi, where the characters are just there to show off the tech, and the sci-fi, it can happen in fantasy too, where they're just there to show off the magic. Magic, you know, is a very common part of fantasy, but it should drive the story forward. The technology should be used as a catalyst to drive the story forward in science fiction as well, and not be the focus <coughs> of the story itself. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. that's one of the things I love about too. It's one of the things I love about Star Trek as well. It really wasn't about the science fiction. They were just using a science fiction setting to tell these stories. Yes. Uh, and it was really the characters and what happens. And especially when it explores themes like cultural diversity and religion and that kind of Star Trek did that really well with the cultural diversity I found. Uh, it, just because they always have all these other alien species, mm -hmm. it's a great, it's a great method or means to tell those stories, to tr where you have a group of people who are seeking to understand different cultures, mm -hmm. and you find a way to work together with them, mm -hmm. uh, and they use this these aliens in this Star Trek universe to tell those stories, uh, and of course they had to have the sci-fi tech there in order to drive the story forward but the story wasn't about transporters and phasers and you know replicators and starships yeah those were merely the means to tell the story not the reason no. for the story's existence yeah like i i, I like i feel like a, a way to to even um you know to 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 encapsulate my understanding of what you're saying which i 100 percent agree with every aspect of every aspect every every tool every aspect of a story needs to serve the story the plot needs to serve the story the world building needs to serve the story the magic needs to serve the story in the case of sci-fi the technology needs to serve the story it cannot you cannot write it in a way where it um it feels like any aspect whether it's the plot or any other aspect of storytelling is supersedes the story and that way with everything serving the story this story gets to you know be expressed in a way where you know everything is working together for it and it's expressed in the best way possible and frank herbert oh my god he 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 really really got that on point and i think frank herbert was one of the first writers that after i read dune i was just like like can i can i even be a writer because i was like how how does one man's mind you know have 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 all these things like 
encapsulated within it and express it in such a way where it's it it, it just tells such a story that everybody can kind of relate to and you know that kind of feeling of being a fan and reading the story i feel like that is something that also helped the adaptation because the adaptation was obviously directed by a fan of it oh very obviously oh my god like uh, that scene some other adaptations <coughs> yeah, all- time. <laughs> <coughs> and uh <coughs> lord of the rings um the amazon version anyway yeah but, well, um, oh man and it's so hard to do an adaptation right which is why and it doesn't matter what the book is what story we're looking at adapting the fan base always gets so hopeful with adaptations and all too often the fan base is let down and i can understand why it gets so frustrating for so many fans of so many things when we see these adaptations and they're not meeting our expectations i don't think it's an easy job to adapt a lot of these stories because you're not just trying to do justice to the story and for the fans of these works but you also want to be able to bring in an audience that hasn't read the material. Yes. And and you want to balance that right. But, you know, and it, it can be a very challenging task. I don't think I have the capacity to do that, not by a long shot, even as a massive fan. Um, you know, I don't think I could adapt, like the Stormlight Archive, for example. I'd probably fail horribly and the fans would hate me, as much as I tried. Um, it's a difficult job. And so, there are so few that get it right so few that get it right and this was one of those gems in there um i relatively i've enjoyed a lot of adaptations for what they are um you know as a fan of wheel of time i still enjoy the show i don't think it's a bad tv show it's just not quite the adaptation fans are looking for yes Uh, Yes. right but as a tv show i think it's still a good tv show so I wouldn't have any problem with the TV show if they didn't call it Wheel of Time. <laughs> like <laughs> exactly, it's like yeah. well, the Wheel of Time, for instance, it inspired so many stories. So it's like you could just call it something else, and I could enjoy it for something else and be like, I still enjoyed Aragon, for instance. Aragon is Aragon is definitely a ripoff of um, like like with all due respect to Christopher Paulini because. Christopher Paulini is my childhood period but you know Aragon definitely ripped off Wheel of Time but I still enjoy Aragon like it doesn't so call it something else don't call it Wheel of Time and I'll have no problem I know in the past I made a whole rant review where I was so because I was just like so mad after seeing what they did to Perrin's character and um, yeah that as far as I'm concerned I would never see that character that calls himself Rand as Rand and and it just is that is just what it is but in the case of dune for instance did i imagine timothy Charlemagne as uh paul atreides no i didn't did i imagine zendaya as tani no i didn't but <clears throat> the he he got the director got like the scenes that mattered right the scenes that had the most emotional effect right the things that they changed in the books were okay because it didn't take anything away from the true essence of why people love the story called dune so the adaptation of dune is for me it's it has to be one of the best adaptations ever done uh dune uh the first part of uh, of uh, of dune it was okay well it was okay enough for me to be like you know what i'm going to keep up with this but part two blew it out of the water completely <laughs> You know, oh, yeah. <clears throat> the scene with the Muad'Dib where he like fully becomes this uh, proactive uh, um, character and he's he's making that speech that, that I had goosebumps when I was watching it in the cinema. And I have to say I watched it more than once because watching oh, you, it once was not both. enough. You and me both. I ordered it <coughs> on demand at home. Watched mm. it at home. It's, it's just so, so good. Uh, and... I, I love stories like Dune because they have, though those writers, those authors have just done storytelling right. I did a whole video on what makes a good story and what's important to have in a good story. Uh, and I feel like Frank Herbert and is one of those authors that has hit every one of those elements so well. It's got effective world building, great character development. Uh, 
things that happen in the story make sense from the world that he has built. Like, so much of it is just done so well. I can't stand it. And I mentioned this in that video. I can't stand it when I'm watching a show or reading a book and something is just out of element. Like, when you tell me, for example, this scene takes place in Iowa and you can clearly see these massive mountains in the background. It's like, that's not Iowa. <laughs> Stop trying to sell this as Iowa. That, that happened in The Last of Us, right? Um... Uh, it was Last of Us, who was like 10 miles east of Boston, and it's clearly this Canadian... It's Alberta Rockies. It was filmed in Alberta. Definitely, those were the Alberta Rocky Mountains. That is not 10 miles east of Boston. At least find some prairie land in Alberta or something to make it look realistic. <laughs> um, same kind of thing happened with X-Files, where they're in these prairie states, but you can see in the shot these big mountains in the background. It's like, we all know it was filmed in B.C. What? But... Come on, like get a better angle. Don't make it look like it's somewhere it's not. And like, like straight up, shout out to BC because a lot of movies we love are actually shot here. Tons. Um, on the way to like, um, on the way to when we are coming to the camp, he showed me where they shot uh, the the building, X-Men. the X Men, and everything. And it well, was kind of weird because I was staring at it. I was like, this looks kind of familiar. And then he just like came out. He was just like. This was where they, they shot X-Men and I was like, yeah, I was looking at that building. So it's a shout out to BC because a lot of movies are actually shot here. I think Deadpool was shot here as well. Deadpool, yeah, it was shot in and around Vancouver. Probably some scenes on Vancouver Island as well. I know The Last of Us was just uh, filming season two up in Nanaimo on Vancouver Island. Hmm. Uh, like this is Hollywood more. Hmm. Like so much film production happens here. It's crazy the amount that happens here. Uh, and, you know, even some class cla- adaptations like The Last of Us filming right here in BC, mm. which is pretty awesome. And let's face it, I mean, this campground is just gorgeous. The scenery is beautiful. We went to this fall, these falls. Um, it's about uh, half a kilometer walk from our campsite. And just like, it's just got this perfect setting. It's almost like right out of a tropical island where you expect a mermaid to pop out of the water. So beautiful. So yeah, beautiful. it's, it's <clears throat> maybe so you nice. can put up pictures for them to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah that would be dope. Like it's such a beautiful place. And um, there's a waterfall and people were sliding down from it. People were diving from the top. Um, yeah, like just a lot of families around having a good time. So um, if you ever want to just chill, have a good time, you know, like see nature in all of his majesty bc is the place to do it for sure so right well stay epic and peace absolutely peace and until next time keep on reading bye <laughs>